everybody and welcome back to another Assetto Corsa Competizione track guide on the Traction channel. Today we have the third and final guide for the all new American Track Pack DLC, and of course that means we are looking at Circuit of the Americas. Disclaimer, I strongly dislike this track personally, but many people love it so I have tried my best to do it justice. I had a lot of learning to do and I think that many of you will as well. It's a tricky circuit to master with its length, slow corners, late apexes and strict track limits. I did manage to put together a decent enough lap in the new Audi Evo 2, but it took an aggressive setup, an aggressive driving style, and overworking the tyres to achieve it. If you're using the default setups, you will be able to lap more consistently, but the ultimate pace won't be quite as strong. Just a reminder that as well as our three-part beginner setup guide, which you can go and watch, we also have plans to make a basic setup guide for all three of these new American tracks in the future. For now though, let's get on with the lap. Heading into turn 1, mount the kerb on the right and start braking at the second to last white concrete strip that runs across the green section. Start moving in as you get closer to the apex, shifting all the way down to first. The corner is very wide and staying out to the right for too long doesn't actually help your lap time. I kind of treat it like a V, lifting off the brake just before the apex to get the car turned and then getting fully back on the power. This technique always tends to work well in the Audi. I slightly misjudged things on this lap, just missing the inside curb by a fraction which in turn delayed me getting back on the power, costing me around about a tenth of a second. On exit, drift back to the left slightly, although you don't need to go all the way over. Keep it pinned through turn 2 using the inside curb to pull the car around. You want to keep heading to the right to open up your entry into turn 3. This is a tricky one when it comes to a turn-in point as it's blind on entry, but you can use the bridge as a gauge. On this lap, I turned in a touch early so I had to readjust, but thankfully it didn't cost me anything on this occasion. You want to put your left wheels on the stripey kerb, just be careful you don't cross over any further than that. Basically, the track limits throughout this section are strict and in all honesty, very annoying. From this point on, the winding S-bends are all about rhythm, timing and balance. Turn back to the right for turn 4, shifting down to 4th and again using the striped kerb on the inside but no more. Use a little throttle to pull the car round, then another dab on the brakes and a direction change into the third gear left-hander at turn 5. It's the same thing again, mount the striped kerb and power out to prepare yourself for 6. This one breaks the flow a little as it's a long right-hander with a double apex. The trick is to get the car in at high speed for the first apex, then ease off as you run out a little wide through the middle of the corner and cut back across the kerb for the second apex late on. Keep turning right and hauling the car over as this will open up turn 7, just watch for the car going light here. If you carry the right speed through this section, you can sway the car back to the left just as you're finished hauling the car to the right, and it all happens in one big smooth motion, but it will take you a number of laps to find this exact rhythm. Generally, it's around about halfway down that small straight between 6 and 7 that you need to head back to the left, and it just needs a brief dab on the brakes to encourage the weight transfer. Ease back on the power as you head towards the apex, nailing the stripy kerb in third gear. You again need to carry that steering angle and throttle all the way through the apex and out towards the exit, as you need to stay somewhat over to the left in order to open up turn 8. You will find yourself around about the middle of the road here if the speed is right, and you need to immediately jump on the brakes, shift down to second, and then roll into turn 9, gradually easing off the brakes as you head for the stripy kerb. Keep the car in nice and tight, hugging that apex kerb pretty much all the way around as you will need to be over to the right for turn 10. You've probably noticed a theme developing throughout this whole section, the car needs to roll from corner to corner, always focusing on balance and exit positioning to open up the next corner. This will take a long time to get right and there's no substitute for track time. The more laps you complete, the more comfortable you will get with the flow. The only track that took me longer to learn than this was Paul Ricard, and I still have a fair way to go. Turn 9 is where I lost the most amount of time on this lap and it was all because of my exit from turn 8. I was impatient and got back on the power slightly too early, which put me on too tight a line heading into 9, and as you can see, forced me to readjust my steering on entry. This caused me to enter at the wrong angle, and I was forced to short shift to compensate for the understeer. All in all, the mistake cost me around about 2 tenths, all because I didn't hug the kerb all the way around, so I'll quickly show you now what it looks like when you do it properly. So as you could see, the angle was better for 9, allowing me to power out earlier and gaining big chunks of time on the exit. You do however still need to watch out for power oversteer, as the road is a little funny here in terms of camber, and the track limits on exit feel exceedingly harsh. Shoot down the hill, clipping the striped kerb if possible for the blind kink at turn 10. Stay to the right, mounting the stripey kerb with your right hand tyres and brake hard for the turn 11 hairpin at the first white concrete strip after the red section turns green. Stay out wide, shifting down to first and aiming for a late apex. 
Aim to get your left hand wheels on the striped curb, getting back on the power and running out to the exit curb. Exit speed here is everything, which is why a late apex with good rotation and early power application unlocks a lot of lap time. Have a nap down the back straight and stay over to the right for the turn 12 hairpin. Get hard on the brakes just before the 100 board. It's a little tricky to spot, so just make sure you know your surroundings. Again, it's a first gear corner that requires a fairly late turn in, although not quite as late on this occasion as the previous corner. Aim to get your right wheels on the stripey curb, surprise surprise, easing off the brakes nice and early to get that required rotation, in the oversteery Audi at least. Get back on the power as soon as possible, running out to the striped exit curb. Head back over to the left, straightening up the car for turn 13, and braking at the white strip of concrete just after the white sector line. Change down to second, haul the car in over the striped curb, but watching out for that nasty orange sausage curb. Ease back on the power and run out to the curbs on the exit. This is probably the trickiest corner exit in the whole lap when it comes to traction, as the corner never really ends, so you do have to be a bit patient and just remember that everyone is suffering from the same time loss. The next section is a weird one. Think Bahrain Sector 2, but, well, worse. Initially it looks like three corners, but it's actually just one corner with a curved braking zone, which you don't really need to worry about. Brake just before the elbow of the second curb sticks out on the inside. Shift down to first, heading over to the right hand side of the circuit. This will allow you to rotate the car for the exceedingly tight left hander, and allow you to apply throttle earlier. If you try and take this one from a narrow angle, you will inevitably understeer towards the outer sausage curb, and you'll be in for a wild ride. On this particular lap, I just missed the striped inside curbing, so if you can hit it, I would recommend it, but on this occasion I didn't actually lose any time, as the rest of the corner was pretty spot on. This whole section, much like the rest of the lap, takes a while to master, so patience is yet again key. Haul yourself back to the left for the entry to turns 16, 17 and 18. This is essentially one continuous corner with four visible apexes. Keep it pinned on entry, pulling your car in across that striped curbing. You then have to lift slightly in order to make the curb for the second apex, before the tightening bend naturally pushes you out a little wide. Having lifted to deal with that change, you will then be able to get back on the power, pulling the car back to the inside for the third apex, and holding you in for the fourth and final one as well. I suffered a little oversteer here between apexes 2 and 3, but that was down to the setup. With the safer setup on the car, you won't have that problem, but you might suffer from the opposite problem, understeer. This will require you to sacrifice a little speed and lap time through this corner, but you will have a more stable experience. Keep the steering lock on as you exit, preparing for a quick change of direction into turn 19. Place your right hand tyres on the stripey curb on entry and brake just before the 50 board. Roll off the brakes nice and early and head towards the stripey curb in third gear. Get on the power as early as possible, even using a bit more of the orange curb if need be, as it tends to be pretty friendly. Open out your steering and let the car run all the way out to the right on exit. Track limits are far more lenient here than at any other point on the circuit for some reason, so make sure you exploit this. Not quite as much as IndyCar did though. This corner is much faster than you may initially believe. Just make sure your left hand wheels remain on that stripey curb. Stay right and brake for turn 20 just before the white concrete strip that runs alongside the pit lane entry line. Stay out wide and turn in late. This corner tightens more than you might think. Get all the way over the stripey curb and back on the power in second gear. Just watch out for oversteer with the awkward camber on the road. Use the exit curb, but watch out for a Thunderbird style takeoff on the sausage curbs. And that concludes the analysis, so now let's play the lap at full speed to see how it all links together.
this track is so long that the odd mistake is inevitable if you aren't an alien, it's all about staying calm and finding the rhythm as much as possible. As I said earlier, make sure you're patient and give it a chance. I can understand why many people don't enjoy lapping this place, and the track limits certainly don't help, but I promise you it gets better with experience. That or, you love it from the start, which many people do as well. When it comes to lap times, expect to see bigger gaps than normal as small mistakes really can add up to significant time loss. This lap was a 204.6, but it's probably flattered by an aggressive setup and cool track conditions. There's still a lot for me to learn here, and the pros in these conditions will be looking to get into the mid 203s. Although 209s may sound a fair bit slower, this is a great target for pro-ams as a starting point around this tricky circuit. If you are still finding your feet, try and aim for a 2 minute 16 when learning the circuit. Just before I go, here is my 10 second summary. Ride the roller coaster turn right, stripey curb, turn left, stripey curb, right, stripey curb, left, stripey curb, right, stripey curb, right, stripe curb twice. Careful through 8 and 9, but get stripey curbs, late turn, stripey curb, good exit for 11 and 12, suffer until 15, survive 4 apexes, faster 19 and go, stripey not sausage through 20. Nailed it. So that's it for me today, but before I go, a quick reminder that we have a full series of ACC guides covering just about everything the game has to offer, so make sure you check out the playlists on this very traction channel. Subscribe so that you don't miss future uploads and hit the notification bell to catch these videos as they are released. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, keep it pinned, and I'll see y'all soon.